Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Rat. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we are responding to your questions and disputes that you brought to us when we asked you, are you beefing with a friend, family member, or partner? Let us settle your dispute once and for all. Serious, funny, or bizarre. We're here to help. That's Give us, us a call at 188-EARPOD1. So we're gonna do that with our many years of settling disputes both with each other and with others. Uh, we're somewhat we're peacemakers. Experts. We're peacemakers, but we're problem solvers. Problem solvers. And today, Engineers. it's not just about making peace, it's about being right. Every, yeah, right. We're gonna tell you who definitively in your dispute is right. Unless we disagree, which is gonna get awkward. But before we get into that, I have a little update I wanna give you, a little something I've been sitting on since I arrived here this morning. Oh. Uh, as you know, I played in my first ever celebrity golf tournament yesterday. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. I did. So you got to play with a celebrity? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, it was the Comedy Gives Back, second annual Comedy Gives Back celebrity golf tournament. And it was funny because I just, it's something I've always wanted to do. Like I see you like the- I give back to comedy? I, well, yeah, that I see the- uh, like the celebrity pro-ams and stuff. And I like golf, and I, in, at least in some circles, am uh, considered a celebrity. So I was like, <laughs> just, you know, little bucket list item, let's play in one and see what happens. So because I guess in some senses I am a comedian, I was included in this group of about 25 stand-up comedians. Oh. Including the one and only Bill Burr. What a what a standout stand up comedian. Yeah, so like like legit stand up comedians. Oh yeah, like respected and and established stand up yeah. comedians who are so good at stand up comedy that they get parts in the Mandalorian. Like those kinds of people, right? Yep. He was he was the, the most well known one there. In fact, he may have been the only one who they auctioned off playing with him, but they didn't auction off playing with anybody else. So uh, you were assigned to like a foursome. A, a, yeah, a foursome. And it ended up being a twosome and then a threesome and then the fourth guy didn't show up because he got COVID. Long story, but it was, what they ended up doing for me, I guess because I was the, the oddball, the internet guy, is as opposed to putting me with like a group of four friends or like a group of four people from a company, mm -hmm. there were the reps for the brands that were doing things. So like the liquid death guy because Liquid Death was supplying the water for this, oh. just like they supplied for Mythicon. Big fan. Uh, the guy who was supplying the shirts for everybody. And then- So the, you were the brand liaison. Yeah, yeah, and then the comedian. Porsche guy. There was, a, there was a hole where if you got a hole in one, you want a Porsche, Porsche Macan or whatever you- Oh. Um, is it Mecan or Pecan? Macan? Uh, that guy, and then there was a, a, another guy who got COVID and didn't show up. So anyway, we did not win. Uh, it was fun, yes. But the thing that I was actually kind of nervous about is that they said that there was going to be a joke telling contest at night at dinner in front of all these comedians and all the teams. Oh. And that the comedian from the team is responsible for coming up with the joke and delivering the joke. Joke telling contest, even that as a phrase well, seems like antiquated but well, and strange. Th th that's, that's a big part of this. It was a joke like a joke joke telling contest. Not a routine, mm -hmm. not a stand up routine, yeah. not a story that happened to you. It was like you tell a joke yeah. joke, like a joke yeah. with a setup and a punchline, which interestingly, like in that comedy community, you know, especially these guys who are of this uh, age, middle age or whatever, like, you know, stand up comedy in the 80s, and like 90s, there's a lot of jokes. There's kind of a tradition of jokes. And so they kind of respect jokes, especially, well, and here's another thing that you was not you would not be surprised to know. Is I would that, have dropped out uh, upon finding this these out. These you know comedians is uh, they kind of just they've kind of ignored a lot of things that have changed in society, and they still just kind of say whatever the hell they want to say. Yeah. In one sense, I sort of respect that that there's a place where that's happening in comedy. That's not that's your not, place. That's not my style, but I respect it. Um, and so I knew I was like because they were like anything goes. So I was like, these are gonna, it's gonna be so dirty. People are gonna say inappropriate things. People are gonna say politically incorrect things. You know, none of this is being recorded. But I was Supposedly. like, I, I have to go, I gotta say, I gotta do something dirty, right? And I was also thinking, 
I need to do something original. Like, I'm going to write my joke. I'm not going to go on, like, Reddit and find a joke. Yeah, you can't do that. Even though that's what a lot of them did. A lot of them were like, this is my uncle's favorite joke, or this is a joke my dad told me multiple times growing up. That's different than going on Reddit, though. Um, if you're related to the person who told you the joke. The guy hosting it was Ben Bailey. You may remember him as the guy who hosted Cash Cab. Oh, yeah. For 14 seasons. So he's a stand-up. So he's emceeing the thing. Yeah. Uh, kind other, of a dry wit. Other other comedians who I'm competing against. Now, I will I will I will say Bill Burr was not feeling great, so he didn't stay for the joke contest, which took some pressure off. Okay, good. But Randy, did uh, you meet Bill? I did meet Bill. Uh, I met him before we started playing. Told him I was representing uh, YouTube comedy, and uh, what was his reaction to that? He was like, "Ah, it's a Bo Burnham, man!" Oh, yeah, Bo Burnham. Yeah, he was like, "I mean, that dude is fucking okay. crazy." Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, um, so so that made me feel good, and yeah. uh, he was very nice. And I met he, I met him at the same time I met Greg Fitzsimmons, who you would recognize if I showed you a picture of him. Uh, guy, you know, this like guy who's been like you've seen him on the Tonight Show, whatever, and he's been around forever. So he, Greg was in it. And then uh, Randy Sklar of uh, Randy and Jason Sklar, the Sklar brothers, was was in the joke. I, w- I went right after Randy. Actually, okay. As a matter of fact, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going. I'm going to deliver my joke for you. Deliver okay? your joke. I'm going to deliver my all joke. All of us. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to get. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to get up there, and do exactly what I did. Right. I grabbed the microphone. Oh well, you're going to stand up. No, I'm going to stay seated because the microphone's here, uh, and I'm going to do word for word what I said. Sit down comedy. Uh, and people had done a lot of like classic set up punchline jokes just to let you know the the world that we're in. Ben Bailey says, Red McLaughlin, everybody. Smattering of applause. Smattering of applause. Disclaimer, um, I am an internet comedian. Smattering of laughter. Okay. Which means I don't know if they're laughing or not. <laughs> a little bit more laughter. My joke is short. Why did my ex-wife cross the road? Why? I don't know, I don't keep up with that fucking bitch. Oh wow, look at you, using the F-bomb and the B-bomb. That was good. Jenna and Brian laughed at it. Uh, So, and I'll tell you, I'm I'm just over here shocked, Rhett. I'm gonna. Be, I I am not a joke writer. Okay, so so you made that up. I made that up. Yeah. What? But you don't have an ex-wife. Yeah. So yeah. you also made up an ex-wife. Yeah. Right. Wow. It's a joke. The liberties that you're taking. And uh, Ben Bailey said there there, there was there, it, it. I wouldn't say it killed, but it di- it did well. It was very respectable. It was like. I would say I didn't. I didn't make Why it did into my the top wife three. Cross the road, and then the answer is. Well, first you said why? Did you have to lean back from your own mic and say why? No, I was imitating the crowd. Or did somebody point. do that? That yeah, that's what. When you're telling jokes to a crowd of comedians, they, they say why? Oh, okay. You know they they give you the other thing, and they're not they don't, they're not going to jump on it and like guess the answer like some person at a comedy club. Like they're comedians. They're like this guy's telling a joke. So it's a great crowd for that. I don't know, I don't keep up with that fucking bitch. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, my joke is short. Tell me about that part of it. Like, uh, why did you feel like you needed to say because that? Because people had been saying that, if they had a short one. I, people would be like, this is a long one, like settle in. So people were like, this is a short one. I, I feel like the... I mean, that may have been a mistake. I feel like if you're open to constructive Oh, I am, but I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna get into joke writing, just so you don't worry. I, you made an excellent choice in having such a staccato joke, but I don't think you should have said my joke is short because that was kind of, the the punch of it was just how bam, and it's over. Because it, the shortness of it is part of the surprise. But you, Well, but once you say, why did so-and-so cross the road, you know that it's a short joke because that's a sh- classic structure of a short joke. So Well, that's another reason was, you it, shouldn't have said that's it. That's a better reason, though. I don't think that I cut the joke off, but... It was more that I was just kind of like feeding off of the things that people have been saying. I will what, say, what I did what make I have it, done? I no, let, well, let me tell you right now I don't know what that I, done. Um, I I was definitely nervous because I was just like I was just trying to save face and say something. 
You wait well, yourself deprecated. Say something, just do something funny and unexpected. And I would say that- You lowered the bar, it you is, made a joke about it. Yeah, right. Then you said something you shouldn't have said. Then you said a really a really good joke. Oh, you like it. So I, I see that in the vein of- I'm like, offended. Like Norm MacDonald. Like, I don't know how familiar you are with like, Norm MacDonald, when he was having, he had a show for his internet show, there was this joke portion. And it was, oh. every joke that Norm MacDonald told was always a misdirect. It was like, yeah, in that way. Um, so that's not based on any joke, but it's based on the structure of like a Norm MacDonald joke, which is like, I'm not gonna give you the thing that you thought I was gonna give you. I'm gonna give you, it's a, it's a joke about the joke, kinda. How'd you come up with that joke? It was not easy. Like, because you, I came up with like four other jokes like, right, that knock, I'm not knock. gonna, I'm not. You were thinking about a knock knock joke? Well, no, I was trying to figure out like, how do you write a joke? Because we don't write jokes. And so I was like, yeah. Do I, so what, here's what I did. I would be like, okay, so there was this guy and he, and he was on a deserted island uh, and the only person that survived was him and another beautiful woman. And I would just say something like that, like that sounds like the beginning of a joke. And I would just see if I could find a way to a punchline. <laughs> I did that like on and off, like as I was driving, as I was doing other things like over the weekend. Like to yourself. Uh, and I never arrived at anything. Oh God, that would have ruined my weekend. Um, but then I was like, oh, you needed to go short. You need to go short. Yeah. Um, and then I was like. And you need to say it short. I was like, what about, uh, what about, uh, what about. Why'd the chicken cross the road? And I said, yeah, what's the take on that? I was like, why did my ex-wife cross the road? And the first. Why? And so I'll give you the, I, this was this was my dirty one. And that, and so I was like, why did my ex-wife cross the road? Why? To get to my neighbor's dick. So that was that was the first one, mm -hmm. right? Yep, and so not nearly as good. You know, I was like, ah, this is that's not good. Um, you know, it's 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 you know th that's not it. And then when not I came even close. Up, yeah, oh yeah, I mean that's why I didn't use it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that as I'm running through, I knew I'm that agreeing. wasn't I'm not, it. I'm I'm not slamming you. I'm agreeing with you. So, uh, and then, and I don't know, I don't know how I came up with it, but I'm not saying that it's great. I'm just saying that I was relieved when I came up with it because I was like, this crowd will appreciate that and I'll at least walk out of here. Now, if I had known that they were just gonna tell jokes that they knew, I would have gotten even a better joke, but I didn't make it to the final three. Um, Randy did make it to the final three. I'm trying to remember who else did. Fitzsimmons made it. Honestly, I don't really care. And then at an this older point. comedian, but th you didn't make it. Th th That's th all I care the about. Guy who won? Because what they did is they did a joke off, and they kept going. Oh, it, it was an older guy. Well, you, you weren't prepared for that. Oh so, no, no. So no. if you would have moved on, it was a new joke. You didn't tell the same joke because that doesn't yeah, yeah, really yeah, work. Yeah. My 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 next joke was one that a friend that D uh, Daniel Strange had told me. Okay. Uh, which was not. I mean, he was just like. Uh, what time does Sean Connery arrive at Wimbledon? Oh, this is an accent joke. Tennis. <laughs> uh, which is cute, cute dad joke. Uh, th 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 there were people doing that kind of joke, that people, I guess people who are like I mean, funny. I kind of think you could have said, I don't care, I don't keep up with that fucking bitch. Would have worked, again. That's, that's what it, you that, would have done. That's what I would have done if I had made it. And then if you would and then if you would have kept making it, same punchline every time. <laughs> Um, I could have been your joke I, caddy. I think you can do it once. I don't think you can do it in a, sec a third time. That would have but, been uh, funny, dude. The finish. The the, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, like it was. They were so dirty. They were shockingly dirty. Oh no! You know, uh, I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, but there was there was no doubt in my mind when a couple of them were delivered. That was like I'm not. I, I'm not. And I was I was very. I was like, be in the middle of the pack. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't get to the finals because then the, you'll really expose yourself. You know, and that ain't funny, right? So, mm. yeah. So that's why uh, you know it was it was a growing a growth experiment, growth experience. Is that what I'm looking for? How did you golf? Um, you know, okay. Moments of brilliance, moments of embarrassment. Oh, Tip break. Typical, uh, typical game of golf. We did not win. See, my mo was both at the same time. That's not how I operate. I know. I have true moments of br brilliance. Oh gosh, shut where up. Where you're just like, oh my gosh, shut that up. guy. I have true moments that of guy, brilliance. Was he a college golfer? I'm saying on the golf course. Uh, check out Stevie Nagin's podcast. Best friends back, all right. I want you to do it. Um, it's never too late to check out a new podcast. 
where where people are connecting, where friendships are happening right before your ears. Um, don't do it if you don't want to do it for me. Do it for yourself. <laughs> Best friends back. All right. Wherever you get your podcast, I think you should do all things uh, in in entertainment. Anything that we're doing at Mythical, you should make a decision to watch it for yourself. Don't do it for us. We're, well, we're making this stuff for you. I went to watch, um, you know, I went to the premiere of Slumberland. Uh, mm-hmm. You'll see this on Netflix. It's a, it's a movie with Jason Momoa, but the star of the movie is Marlo Barkley. Mm-hmm. And we, me, Christy, and Lando went to the premiere, but it, we went to that entertainment event for her and her family because we are very close friends. You know, uh, Lando and Marlo grew up together. Mm-hmm. I think Marlo's still 12. I, th- I think her and Lando are about the same age. She's not 13 yet. Marlo is a freaking star of this movie. Oh yeah. Like, and Jason Momoa is like her su- her um, her supporting character, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went to that for her. But I was absolutely relieved to find out that I stayed for me. You know, you go to things to support your friends, and when it's a work of art, like a movie, it's like, oh crap, what am I gonna, what am I gonna say afterward if it sucks? It was so good. Hmm. So I know it's not my wreck this week, but you just made me think of it. Um, it paid off okay. to, to do entertainment for somebody else. Check out Slumberland. Uh, if you have kids in that age range, uh, they will love it. It's it feels like the type of story that you think should have been done before, but it at the same time it's like a it. I don't think it has, and it's like it deals with dreams, and it's like wholly original, very. It's not that Fred Savage movie. Very fun. Um, also a tearjerker where he goes underneath his house or something. And I was so proud of Marlo. She is so good. In it, you remember we uh, check out Slumberland. We wanted her to be uh, when she was just getting started with her acting. <clears throat> we wanted her to be the little girl in the episode of Buddy System where the little girl comes to the that's right the door selling the, the candy, candy bar salesman. and then it goes into this like old like frontier story. There was a con- conflict of her. That's she, right. She, she was that's she right. was committed to something else or whatever, so we couldn't do it. We could have derailed her whole acting career if she had done that buddy system thing. Yeah, she probably true. made the right choice. Let, let's get into these voicemails. I mean, it's about time to settle some disputes. I'm just going to start right here at the top. Hey, Rhett and Link. Um, I'm feuding with my mom because she has eaten half of my freezer. All 20 breakfast sandwiches I just bought from Costco. Don't know what to do. Please help. Oh. Oh. Dang, I'm sorry. Um, I feel like I need more details. Like, was this in one sitting? I know. Was this that's a lot of breakfast sandwiches. Was this over the course of if she was that hungry, two hours? Let her have it. Because if you buy, if you've got a twenty sandwich package from Costco, I would think that most people are anticipating that lasting at least a month. You know, unless you're. I mean, even if you're the kind of person who's eating it every single morning, you're yeah, making that's it three weeks. days. Yeah. We have breakfast sandwiches in our freezer. I do not eat them because I don't think they can actually be good for you. And I eat a smoothie every morning. But Who my, eats the breakfast sandwiches? My, my kids eat them. Christy doesn't eat them either. So we we don't, haven't experienced this you mean issue. Like a Jimmy but, Dean? Yeah. Yeah, that's what Shepard's into. I um have a, a reputation of of being one to just unapologetically take people's stuff uh, after taking Tim's salsa from the fridge for that GMM episode. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that wasn't a good look for me. And every time I see Tim now, I still feel bad about it. But it sounds like her mom is unapologetic or unconversant about it because she's thinking she's the one that needs to do something about it. I think, isn't it as simple as a question? Mom, do you know that these, mom, what do you, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like a non accusatory question. That's because maybe there's- You like those breakfast sandwiches I bought for myself, don't you, Mom? What do you think of those? I, I need- Do you know that I, I'm having to- In is, my mind, those are my breakfast sandwiches, Mom. Well, I don't- Whose are they in your mind? I don't think that that's necessarily 
I, I don't think that she is saying that her mom can't eat any of her breakfast sandwiches. She's saying that her mom ate all of her breakfast sandwiches. Yeah. I don't know if she was on vacation. I don't know if her mom had a breakfast party. I don't know the context, but I am assuming- Mom should be replacing these breakfast sandwiches. That she just ate way too many in too short of a period of a time, and she obviously had bought them not primarily, or not exclusively, but primarily for herself, right? I mean, I'm assuming that there's some sort of shared budget, you're sharing a house, uh, you know, it's not like, this isn't necessarily a roommate situation no, where there's right. separate bank accounts, this is my stuff, I have my name on it, Mom I'm budgeted for this. Mom does have some sort of a, a trump card to play here, I believe. She could probably, be cashing in. From a budget perspective. She could be cashing in on a, a, a parent tax. Maybe if I knew that, if I knew that earlier in life she wasn't the kind of mom who would reach over and eat some of her kids' food in the way that I have done throughout my life, then maybe she's just making up for it all in a, like a week, one, one crazy binge. Like I said, I'm not one to talk here, but at my house, Lando will post-it note stuff in the fridge. And I know Tim did that with the salsa, uh, it was extenuating circumstances. I do I need to apologize again, Tim? Well, hold on, but I'm do sorry. you do this to Lando? Do you eat Lando's? Mm, no. <laughs> well, give me an example of something okay, that Lando would, would, would post it. No. Um, some special mochis in the freezer. Okay. Um, some special chocolate milks in the fridge. Um, leftovers. That's that's where I get him. Because he'll label the leftover, but I know he's not gonna go back and eat it. And so I feel like I'm doing a, a service to just like glean the fridge from stuff that is gonna be thrown away if, if it's not eaten today. Well, at least you can get him to label it. Like, I I can't get my kids, my kids won't eat leftovers, man. I eat, every, I eat all the leftovers. Like, that's the first place I go at night. Is like, mm. what's left over? Oh, really? Yeah, it just feels. I think that she should, I, I think you gotta try labeling. That's my that's my thing. Just start there. Yes, it's a little passive aggressive. Rebuy the sandwiches yourself. Then you're in a position of power and you label it. Or have a conversation with your mom if you're on if you're still on speaking terms. Yeah, t <laughs> I, I think this is just a, a there's a easy solve here, which is a conversation and um saying, Hey, if you really like these breakfast sandwiches, which it, apparently you do and I do as well, maybe we get the forty pack next time. Right. You know? There's a compromise on the horizon. Yeah. Hi, Rhett and Link. My name is Robert. I'm calling from BC in Canada. My wife and I have a constant argument about what is ground and what is floor. I like to call the outside where anything is paved or uh, has cement on it, anything like that, the ground, or the floor. She uh says that it's still the ground. My argument is that it is called the floor because anything that is not dirt can't be considered the ground because it is made by people. So I think it's called the floor. She thinks it's called the ground because it's outside. So that's our argument that we constantly have and it has created some really funny moments in our marriage and I'd like you guys to sell it for us. All right, have a good day, bye. He said he'd like for us to settle it for him. It seems pretty simple. Robert, you're wrong. The floor is inside, the ground is outside. It's not about being man-made or not, unless it's something that's like. I have, I have an exception. Am I wrong? I have an exception that I think. Yeah, I'm thinking there's, a, there's an exception to that, I but I think that's the starting point. I, I think that, I also think that Robert is Maybe you're right wrong, in some instances. But it's not, the distinction is not inside and outside. If it's inside, it is floor, and if it's dirt nope. outside, it is ground. Like those extremes. Nope. And, I, and you're not letting me get my thought out. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. And it, then somewhere in the middle, we can hash it out. It has nothing How to do, you do disagree with, with that? being inside and outside. It has to do with whether or not there is a canopy or a roof. That's why we call it the forest floor. We don't call it the forest ground. And that is because there is a canopy of trees and like oh, on, the for, on the forest floor. But you don't say on the floor of the meadow or the floor of the valley because that's open. So it has to do not with being outside, but with being open, so a patio does not have a floor unless it is a screened in porch. Now you're now we're in a situation where you can say that's the floor of the porch. It's all about whether or not there is something over the top of you, and it doesn't have to be human made. It's just, is there a, is there a clear shot to the sky? And if so, whatever is underneath you 
is not floor, but ground. Well, that's nice, Brett. That is a nice analysis. Um, but patio is neither floor nor ground. It is patio. I agree with that. So if there's if there's no canopy over your patio and it's still like a cement, just like a cement slab, you can't call it ground because it's, now I'm about to agree with him, because it's not, because it's man-made, but you can't call it floor because to your point, there's no canopy. But if you were on a patio so that was a covered. Floor, a floor has to have a canopy. I agree with that. Yeah. But a forest floor is also ground. That's the there's common ground with the forest in that it is both, and I think and the a canopy, patio is neither. I think the because canopy, it's just a patio. It's a patio. Like you look down, it's like what is that? Is that the patio floor? Is that the patio ground? Is it the patio floor? Well, but by I'm by so nature, am, I'm all over the place. By nature, a patio does not have a canopy. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, a porch. You're right. You, you, the difference between a porch and a patio is the canopy. Is the canopy? Oh, yeah, and, you're and right. I, and and if you're talking about the retractable canopy, I have one of those. That doesn't count. That doesn't make it a floor. It's not like oh, it's a floor when it's out, and it's not. No, no, no. I'm talking about. You, there's got to be some supports. This thing's got to be able to stand up in the wind, because it, you need to be able to call it a ceiling. So if I'm on a porch somewhere, and I look up. Like I was talking to your dad at Mythicon about the ceilings of porches yeah, that are painted blue. And my understanding based on all these conversations that I had with people in the South was that they're painted blue because of like bugs, which I never believed, but that was what people told me. They're like, flies don't like the, the blue, light blue. And your dad was like, it's like the sky. Yeah. It's like looking like the sky. And he says, they also do mint green, like mint green or baby blue, those are the two colors. But that's the ceiling of the porch, is what you would call that. If I was talking to a painter, he would say, what color do you want me to paint the the, uh, the ceiling of the porch? Wouldn't he? Or would he say, do you want me to paint the underside of the awning? Eh, I think he would say ceiling. And what, por what? The porch ceiling. And then what color do you want me to paint the floor? What color do you want me to porch? To, the floor of the porch. To stain the patio floor, the porch floor. But he went, but patio. Was, patio was floor. I'm just trying it out. Patio, I think of like a, just a square, either concrete or wood or brick or something that you might have an umbrella on. Now, my backyard is uh, pavers, like individual stones that are deck. laid. You could call it a deck because there is a pool there. But there's parts of it, even the part with the retractable awning. Not a floor. I'm trying to think what I've called that. Like I need to, I need to blow off the, the back. That's what I just say. I call it the back. The back. <laughs> I don't call it. It's not ground, and it's not floor. It's pavers. Yeah, but what do you call that area? The back. You might call that a patio. I'm glad we could settle this. Uh. So I think that we found a, a third alternative here. That it, I don't know if it was illuminating at all. But I, I but I, I think that Robert's if there is distinction a canopy, is wrong. If there's a permanent canopy, then it's underneath it is a floor. And if it's if it's naturally occurring uncanopied surface outdoors, that's ground. And if so you at got least an, take those things off the table. And if you got an old school house, there's plenty of houses that have dirt floors, and that is also the ground. But it also happens to be the floor of the home. But it's a dirt floor. Yep. So floor and ground can be the same thing if your floor is ground. There you go. Please explain to my husband that watching your own kid is not babysitting. Thank you. <laughs> oh, this Ouch. is heated. I love the fact that you could hear children just making a racket in the background of the voicemail. Yeah, yeah. Like this is the world from which this lovely woman is exasperatedly leaving us a voicemail. Yeah. You ever been guilty of this? I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure. Using the term babysit to take care of your own kids? I don't know well, if I've ever done e that. Even if you don't use the term, there's definitely playing this card of like, well, I, wa I, I watched them. You know, I don't go so far as to say I'm babysitting the kids like it's a 
a paid occupation. But if you watch them, like, you're implying that I'm gonna there's other watch times the you didn't so you, watch them. I'm gonna I'm watch the kids so you can do something. As opposed to the other times when you don't watch them. Which is usually. And our kids are of an age that, you know, they don't need to be watched anymore. Yeah. But like, when our kids were watching age, I, I would always like use it as like a, some sort of a, a merit badge. That never worked, and it and I agree, it's not, it wasn't valid, you know, because, I mean, Christy and Jesse, they were homeschool teachers, you know, as well as moms, like they were, so much of their time was like, tending to these children, good gosh. By their own choice. Yeah, 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 it wasn't. Um, Just to be clear, I kept telling Jesse year after year, you want, you want to stop doing that? Stop, you need to stop watching these kids. You need to stop being the babysitter. Um, but yeah, it's like when you step in, it would be like some, some something exceptional. Yeah, that's a card you can't play, my man. Yeah, your wife's right. Uh, just stop using that term when you watch the kids. You cannot do that. Do, we have a serious category. You want to get into like a serious one? And then come back to a less serious one? Yeah, because we might need a little okay. yeah. a little relief, okay, you know? Yeah. Um, let's, let's start here. Hey, written links. Me and my girlfriend recently have been butting heads a little bit. She's been working a lot and I'm very proud of all the work that she's been doing and all the money she's been saving. She's trying to move out right now. So I understand why she's been in her grind set in her, you know, girl boss money moves era. But, uh, Sometimes I just want her to acknowledge the fact that I am also still here and that I am, you know, a part of her life and someone that would like to spend time with her. I uh, have a difficult dilemma on my hands, though, because it's an interesting dichotomy, this feeling of being so proud of her for working so hard, but at the same time wishing that she would at least admit a little bit that there is a strain on our relationship because of how much she works. I'm not exactly sure what to do, and I would love your guys' feedback. Help me out, help out this struggling mythical beast. Anyway, appreciate you guys. I love all you do. Keep on keeping on. Um, I really do appreciate all your content and all your happiness that you give to the world. Have a good one. Well, okay. As as that question was being asked, uh, Jenna <laughs> couldn't stay in her seat. I mean, she was, you know, there. So I kind of feel like we should uh, let the woman in the room, <laughs> Jenna. We'd love for you to kick this one off to re to give us a, an initial reaction to this question. It it sounds like he has uh, has not had this conversation with his partner, and mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that is a conversation that he needs to have with. Her and his tone was a little. I don't think he meant anything by it. I think his to tone came across a little iffy. But it, it's clear. It's it's a hard thing to do because because. What do you say when in that situation? I don't know. It's just one of those where it's like if if it if the roles were reversed, um, it would be a conversation you want to have with your partner. Like if if the man was right. working too much and the and the woman or whichever, however the partnership mm -hmm. is. Um, either way, he's he he's feeling he sounds real sad. Huh. And I think it's he's got to have that like set plan a date night, just the two of them get out of their normal stuff and have a conversation. And another thing I think that you all can advise on is one thing about your relationships I think it's really cool that you do is you have a set day where you spend time with your wives. Like you have you have planned time with them. That is part of your schedule and it seems like with his girlfriend's new schedule getting so crazy and how amazing that is for her that maybe they need to discuss scheduled quality time. Well, yeah, it's interesting yeah. because I feel like in some senses there's a, a I can relate to this right now, right? Um, you know, over the past couple of years, Jesse has really started doing, you know, she really kind of started leaning into her interior design stuff, and then really in the in the past like 
two years especially, and then this year, you know, she's taken on a number of clients. She just got through with a really big project. And the way that her time was structured, which was very unusual for me, was getting home and she's she's working. She's working when I get home. Mm-hmm. And she's working into like we're, we don't we're not, we're not like at least when it got to crunch time we're not watching TV together. Now, when you've been married to somebody for twenty one years, um, there in one sense it's like oh well Jesse's busy right now I'm gonna go watch uh, something that she would never watch with me. It's like, you know it's what I'm saying opportunity. Yeah, it's like because I am we I've spent a lot of time with her and I'm gonna continue to spend a lot of time with her and this is sort of extenuating circumstances. I, yeah, that yeah that is a a good corollary point that like the cumulative time. But, but that you I don't spend. think that is applicable to this particular situation. I I'm just assuming because it sounds like you know we're kind of still building the relationship in a lot of ways. Not that I'm not building the relationship anymore, but you know you know what I mean. But there's also this thing where it's like, in the context of my relationship with Jesse, is that so much of um, what her life has been about and what her activities have revolved around and where she lives revolves around is me and my work, right? Yeah. Which, which tends to be a more traditional, you know, it's given the history of the world and the patriarchy, like that tends to be the, the situation. It's like, well, the man's right. gonna do this and I've gotta support him in doing this. And that was our story for you know a, a really long time. Now, as the kids have gotten older and, and Jesse has a lot of aspirations and dreams and things that she wants to do, uh, quote unquote, her, uh, I don't know, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna choose to say that he was doing this in a loving way, her girl boss money-making moves. <laughs> <laughs> right. I uh, will say, that, those terms are that kind seemed of like not... it could be, yeah, right. Used yeah. anymore by women? Yeah, right. So yes, there's other there's other things. Uh, yeah. But it's been an interesting thing for me to be someone who I feel like I've gotten not yeah I've gotten. She's done so much for me. She's done so much for me, which I don't know the history of their relationship. But for me, there's this like, oh, I can go and be a part of this thing that's all about Jesse, and I I kind of fade into the background and kind of can support her. Uh, but as it relates to like our time together, even our date night has gotten canceled for the past six weeks because she's been so busy. But mm-hmm. that project is over. We'll we'll do the date night this week. We're kind of getting back as long as we kind of return to the to the normal of actually spending quality time with each other. Um, and I I think that what Jenna was saying at the beginning about. You know, this is the these these are the bread and butter conversations of a relationship. It's like when it comes to stuff like this, this is what this is where the magic happens. Honestly, if if you can really connect, um, in about not being able to connect, I think there's a, a way in is not it's it's not corrective. Like, don't take a corrective approach. Maybe think about having more of a um still supportive and celebratory and it's like I'm celebrating what you're doing I'm supporting what you're doing but it's creating a challenge Th- that kind of frames it but then your motive like where you're coming from is want is love and wanting to connect and missing a level of intimacy and I think that you know if you approach it from that angle as long as that's truthful that's going to go a long way right you know, yep. to say, hey, let's let's put. Is there some? Can we put some on the calendar? Can we can we put a plan in place where I don't feel threatened by what you're going after, but I can be your biggest fan and champion, but still have my needs met by you? Because it is a reality that if your if the time that you would otherwise spend together is spent apart because of work. You have to manage that reality in your relationship. Some people, two busy professionals who work late and are like, we see each other on the weekends. And that's an agreement. We've agreed to that. We've communicated that. <laughs> we, we, we have our expectations are in line. Yeah. It's all about obviously the expectations are not aligned right now. And so, and you have to figure out can they be aligned? And if they can't, then that's a different conversation, you know? 
Yeah, leave us another voicemail if that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, we'll put Jenna back on it. Yes. Here's another one. Let's stay serious. Hey, guys. This is Mike from Michigan. So I've been in a beef with my sister for, oh, 14 years now. And, well, let's just say she's not exactly all the way there in the head. And she got in a fist fight with my dad, of all people, who was extremely old at the time. And I was never able to forgive her for it. And I don't know how to forgive her for it. And now my niece and nephew want to get involved with me, her kids. And my niece is my goddaughter. And I don't know how to bring them back into my life without bringing her into my life. I know it's horrible to take your sister out of your life in your way, but it's just kind of something I don't want to be involved in my life anymore, but I really want my niece and nephew involved in my life, if that makes any sense. Sorry, a little nervous. But uh, if you guys can maybe approach this in a way for me where I can get them back into my life and somehow make it work with my sister too, I don't know if that's possible, but thanks, guys. Wow. Mm. Mike, thanks for sharing your story. I, uh, our hearts go out to you. I know when you said in like 14 years, like our hearts just kind of dropped, you know? It's, you know, that's sad. It's, it seems like it's sad for everybody involved. And it's kind of intimidating to speak into your situation knowing only what you just shared in the voicemail. Again, I, I thank you for sharing it. Um, but I just want to acknowledge that, like, we're definitely out of our depth here. So I think the the first thing I want to do is just say, you know, from a from a heart level, just that, like, we feel for you. And, um, you know, I've had um, estranged long-term relationships, and um, it, it, it doesn't feel good because it's not, you know, it's not the... It's not the natural order of things. You see so many, you you know, you imagine those relationships where everything's working out and you see people having relationships with, in this case, their siblings and it's what you don't have. And I just know how how difficult that could be. Um, I also know that there's situations, and again, I we don't know enough about your situation to like, be prescriptive, but in general, there's there is a reality where it's it's the right decision, it's the best decision to put boundaries in place, and sometimes, and that's along a whole spectrum. Sometimes that means that there isn't any contact, and that may be that's the best choice for some people in some situations, you know. And there's this whole range, and when you've got um, nieces and nephews involved. Um, that that a lot of times I, I I have to think makes it hurt that that much more. Yeah, I think I mean I completely agree that we're not you know we can't give you specific advice, but there are principles that are true that are true in your situation as well. Like Link said, I mean I think it's almost overused at this point. The term boundaries it's all it's 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 used as much as people labeling other people narcissists. It's like, it's the thing that we all do on social media, but there's a lot of truth in it. And it, and I think that um, it's okay to set a boundary that is painful to implement because sometimes the pain that you and someone else would experience with that boundary did not exist is even greater. But both are painful. Like the boundary being in place and the boundary not being in place are both painful experiences. So sometimes there's just, there, there is not a great solution. And I don't know, I mean, I think that conceivably, depending on your circumstances and like what the proximity is, are you in the same town? How old are the niece and nephew? Like, is this the kind of thing that if there was any kind of contact, it would lead to, um, like what were the problems? What were the nature of the problems? You kind of have to think about it like that to think, what are the boundaries that I could set? I don't know. Maybe there is a boundary that you can set where it's like, um, my contact with my sister is going to be in relation to logistical things regarding my time with her kids. 
I'm not saying that's what you should do, but right. I'm saying but that- th- there may be a creative solution somewhere in the middle, and, and when- It's like gery- gerrymandering a new uh, <laughs> district. Right. You have to navigate your specific situation, but draw the boundary and communicate the boundary. So it's like, right. when I don't talk to you about this, it's because I'm setting this boundary. If you're not okay with that, then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have the boundary here at all. Our, the boundary is gonna be extended, and I'm gonna have to push everybody out. And sometimes they they can move, so it's not like you're making one decision and then that's it. And it so I guess the first thing we're saying is you don't have to make an all or nothing decision. There's like this whole spectrum along the way that you could make these, even if it's a convoluted type of gerrymandered boundary. But then, you know. Two days later, or two months later, you might discover that that needs to move. I mean, it needs to tighten up, or it could it could loosen up. I mean, you know, there's, um, you know, if 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 the forgiveness is at play, that you know, it, it's it's always something worth considering. But it's yeah. you know. Uh, because it depends I, I think on we'll your. Per- it also that. depends on your personal tolerance, right? Right. Uh, there are some people who might be in a situation where any contact with a person would be too triggering for them, where they just can't do it. And there might be situations where it's like, this person is difficult, annoying, whatever, an inconvenience, but they, but I'm not unsafe, and I'm not going to be. You know, my mental health won't be compromised. Only you know that. In a, in a given situation, it's a, what your your personal level of tolerance is. There are people that you can choose to have in your life so long as you know the reality of what it means. Right, and, <laughs> and, these are, and you, you know, admit that reality to yourself. Like um, finding, finding a trusted resource, which could be a therapist, I think is a great uh, avenue to pursue for something like this, a sounding board that you may have to pay for, <laughs> you know? if you don't have someone in your life. Jenna? Yeah, I will say I do have uh, something comparable to that in my history with certain family. Uh, my, my Speaking to especially that you mentioned she's not right in the head, so perhaps there's some mental health issues going on. Uh, my father, the last five, seven years of his life, dipped heavily into alcoholism and it ultimately caused him to die uh, from chronic alcoholism. And it was one of those situations where, similar to mental health issues, it's a hard place to be in because you know that person isn't their mental health issue. Like, that isn't who they are in their entirety. Mm -hmm. Like, you see glimmers of who they could be and who they were before, who they are when they're on the right medication, when they're not you know, uh, drinking kind of scenarios. And Mm -hmm. there were boundaries that we had to set up. And some of my family members had much stronger boundaries than I necessarily did. But I also had a couple boundaries as well. And it was, I mean, it's gut-wrenching when those boundaries are broken. Um, But they're the boundaries that you have to set uh, to protect everyone else. And... Some things that we would do was um, dad could come to public events and support us, but he couldn't couldn't be drinking. And if he had been drinking, we would steal his car keys, like a a whole scenario. So like if you want to test the waters of of being able to see your nieces and nephews, because that must be devastating that you're not able to be a part of their lives and like a positive role model to them as well. I would suggest something a bit more public, like if, uh, like if they have, you know, if they have extracurriculars. That way, you, you don't have to sit next to your sister, but you could still be there supporting your niece and nephew. Just like really low touch things, and like forgiveness changes. Like, you, fourteen years is a very long time to um, carry that, and I feel for that. And I have known people who have been in really awful abusive situations with parents or with other siblings that as they have all aged, 
the boundaries have opened up again. Like the com- lines of communication have opened up again very slowly. Mm-hmm. So, but I highly recommend, yes, yeah, certainly speaking to a healthcare professional like a, a therapist on the best path, best path forward. But yeah, I 100% feel this situation and it, there's no easy way to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, exactly. Every path forward is is difficult. Thanks, Jenna, for sharing that. Yeah. Well, we went serious. Maybe, we, all right, so <laughs> we talked about going back. Let's mix it up a little bit. All right, so now we're going to take a hard left turn. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Rhett and Link, longtime fan of Ear Biscuits and Good Mythical Morning. So I have a dispute that my partner and I have had. When you are sitting down on the commode and you go to clean up the area, do you do it from the front or back? Let me know. Love you guys. Well, this is, this is, <laughs> this is easy. You're, you're supposed to go front to back. Well, that's not, that wasn't what was asked. It was, do you go down oh. from the front or do you go ar- from the ba- from the back? Oh. White, white direction is, a, is yeah, obviously that's front to back. Everybody knows that for, especially if you have a vagina, um, you don't wanna be wiping the fecal matter towards Come it, on okay? Now. Just mm-hmm. to be very specific. Mm-hmm. You can get, you know, if you got a ball sack, you can get some shit on your ball sack, it's not the end of the world, but I don't <laughs> recommend it. This is so great. Uh, but, and again, I do think that whether or not just you Just don't ha- leave it there for 14 years. <laughs> to tie it into the last. I think whether or not you have a penis is somewhat, uh, is somewhat uh, rel- uh, you know. Irrelevant. Re- relevant. Irrelevant. It, well, no, I'm saying that like. It's too far. Um, I mean, for it's me, too far from the to action. try to go through the space oh, oh, that yeah. is being yeah, cur- I didn't, currently I didn't filled even, with I manhood. I couldn't even hear the question that way. Um, I couldn't even hear the question. Did you hear the question that way, that it was like, you go in, in from the front of your, no. It's just, it's just you, you don't do that. Yeah, but some people might because think, then, apparently, apparently some, then someone, in this, and someone in this situation, we don't know if it's the caller or, the, or the, the partner. Because you have to go back to front when wiping, if you're reaching through the front, then you're, you're pushing. Just, you're bulldozing. You're pushing. You're bulldozing. Which is very difficult that's to That's not do. gonna work. Yeah, yeah, that's not really a wipe, that's a push. You don't wanna do um, that. Yeah, so I think you go around the back, uh, now the real question is: Do you stand up or not? Uh, no. Um, if you stand up, the cheeks come together. What are you talking oh, about? Not if you stand up and bend over. Well, then, yeah, but if you stand up and then bend over, the, the bidet, cheeks have come together. The bidet changes everything. Just get a freaking bidet, y'all. Uh, bidet oh my changes gosh. everything. But it's I, bidet at night. That's <laughs> the difference. But if I do not have access to a bidet, my final wipe. Is a standing wipe. So, for, so you can exit that much quicker. I just feel like I'm like one more time just to make absolute sure. Why would you stand up for the last wipe? I don't know. It feels like a ceremonial. And you're bent over. Ritualistic. You're like hinging. Well, yeah, you got yeah. I mean, I, no one's watching. You know, I mean, I'm not. I mean, I'm not. It's not a show for anybody. Uh, I'll take some video if you want. Nope, I don't want. Okay, Th- right. Thanks for asking. But, okay. Hey, Rhett and Link, it's Kaylin from New Jersey. Um, I'm beefing with my mom because she thinks I'm a monster for not having the toothpaste perfectly squeezed down to the bottom every time. I kind of think you don't need to do that until you're at the very end trying to get every little bit of it out, but uh, I don't know, am I a monster? You know, I, I, I appreciate the question and the love, Kaylin. You are not a monster. And I think this represents uh, an area of growth for me, and I would like to pat myself on the back. You know, I used to think you had to squeeze from the bottom. I was in the mom's camp. But then I realized, you know what? Who gives a crap? I mean, just squeeze it from wherever but you do want. do you have to deal? Because I would have thought that Christy was, did it the quote-unquote correct way as well. Well, Christy and I do not share toothpaste. Do you use a different brand? Yes. Okay, is that But why? even if we didn't, uh, we each have our own drawer with all of our stuff in it and nothing shared. So that's a key here. It's like have your own toothpaste and do whatever you want with it. Yeah, I have my own as well. And I I used to think that the right way to do it is to squeeze from the bottom because at some point that is the right way. But I agree with you, Kaylin. You can wait to the last, till you need to do it, and then you just take it and you grab the end of it and you put it on the edge of the counter and you you 
you 90 degree that thing over the counter and use it to get all of the toothpaste to the end and get get the last little bits out. Have but you, you don't noticed? have to do it every time. The reason why it's a personal growth for me is because I can look at that quote unquote imperfect tube of toothpaste that's just been like squeezed like a monster in the middle and say, you know what? I can live with this unsettling reality. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. And then it'll- It's, it's and then, exposure therapy. Then later, I'll squeeze it all down there. I'll make sure it's all out. So Caitlin, your mom is the monster, and I used to be that monster. Well, get your own toothpaste. Have you noticed that toothpaste tube technology has largely, for many brands, made this argument irrelevant. Have you noticed this trend? That they... Every single what? toothpaste that I've bought in the past five years, at least the brands that I frequent. You know, I'm not talking, it's not 1985 toothpaste where it's just like... It's not like a foil container? It's a toothpaste tube that every time you squeeze it, it returns to its original shape. Uh, that's every what, single time. Like the Quip toothpaste tube is like that. Yeah, and so, and then I have this, um, I started Kinda. using the, uh, the, after they told me something about my enamel, I started using like the pro enamel, like a, enamel one, it does the same thing, and then I just got one, because the last time I went to the toothpaste, uh, to the toothpaste person, to the dentist, they were <laughs> like, you know, we're gonna have to do a cleaning every four months because you get build up so fast, and so I'm now I'm going, I switched to one that like attacks build up, and it's the same thing, and it's just like, you just take it, grasp it, squeeze it, and it takes care of itself. I think the toothpaste people are trying to make this dispute irrelevant. They're trying to take this out of the conversation. It, But it necessitates doing what I say, which is at a certain point, you can't, you can't tell how empty it is, but you gotta do that. You gotta do the pumps technique, <laughs> the fold and squeeze. I, that's not, well, no, I don't do the fold and squeeze. I don't do the roll up, I do the, I do the hang it over the edge of the counter. It's actually a fun little thing to do. I've seen your video if you want. Okay. Uh, I'll be naked. I think that I think the fold and squeeze I'll also be accomplish, accomplishes the, the same thing, at least in the tubes that I've currently It does, got. it um, does. So I think that the world it, is becoming it's a, a lot more time through technology. It's a lot more time to do the fold and squeeze and it's not worth it. You're taking it out and putting it on the counter? That seems like it, I'm, I'm no, literally. It's, it's an easy motion. <laughs> Squeeze. I'm picking it up, folding it, and squeezing it. Boom, it's done. And then when it gets down to like the last ounce, like if I can get two when more brushes out squeeze, of this. When you squeeze though, some of it is being sent the wrong direction. Those, those last two brushes, I'm not even interested in that toothpaste. Call, call me wasteful all you want to. I'm not working hard for brushing my teeth. Oh, I know. I'm not working that hard for that last two teeth. To the last two days. I do, it's a personal victory. If you need a personal victory in your life, get the last of the toothpaste out. Well, you, why don't you get some scissors and cut it open? You ever thought of that? I've, I've done that. Really? Yeah, yeah, it, it's a personal victory. If the scissors are already there, like I'm not gonna go find You've the scissors. cut into a toothpaste tube? Yeah. Now that's a different type of person right there. I mean, it's different for me. Personal I mean. victories, personal victories. Um, okay. I feel, I feel like, the personal victory for us today is that we covered a lot of ground, we covered a lot of emotions, and now we just need another recommendation to go with my slumberland. Um, I am going to recommend a a creator, a content creator, uh, whose TikTok and YouTube channel I quite enjoy. Okay. His name is Forrest Valkai. I think I'm saying the last name. For us with two R's. You are saying the name, but are you saying it correctly? I think I'm saying it correctly. Spell it all? Uh, for us with two R's and then V-A-L uh, K-A-I. Okay. Valkai. And he talks on YouTube and TikTok about, on TikTok he is renegade science teacher. But he just talks a lot about things that I'm interested in, about, uh, you know, Fossils and evolution. He just he just started a new series that where he's going into real depth about evolution. Um, you know he's a, he's a, he's a he's a good guy. He's a nice guy. He's not. Um, he's a good boy. Trying to make fun of people and uh, or to say that people are dumb or whatever. That's not his his point. His point is just like this is what we know about this stuff, and it's pretty awesome. Forrest Valkai. All right, we'll speak at you next week. 
As always, use hashtag Ear Biscuits to continue the conversation in written form. And if you want to respond to anything we said today or in any episode or to any of the prompts that we put out on Twitter, you can call us at 188-EARPOD. One. Did I lose you? Yeah, you did. I'm back, though. Bye. Hi, I'm currently beefing with uh, my best friend. I don't know if we're technically ex-best friends right now, but she accepted a job offer that was sent out to me. We were both offered the job, and we talked about it. She said she did not want the job, that it was not her career field. It's not what she wanted to do in the future. Um, and I really, really wanted the job. And then they extended the offer to both of us. And she took it. And when she took it, they decided to no longer give it to me. And needless to say, um, I didn't take it well. I think I overreacted a little bit. But yeah, I, I think I'm past it now. I have a new job and everything is fine. But I still have a little bit of like resentment with it. Thank you guys. Love you. Hey, Rhett and Link. Teresa Ann here. I'm calling in reference to the fact that I am beefing with my sister once again. Just because she has a child, does she get the right to be the sole host of every holiday? Thanks. Love you guys. Keep up the great work. Hey, Rhett and Link. This is Liddy from Houston, Texas. I just wanted to call in and try to get some advice for a beef I currently have with my husband. Um, I am wanting to put our Christmas tree up already. I'm very excited about the holiday season. I love how the Christmas tree just lights up the room and all the cheer and joy it brings to the house. Uh, But of course, he does not want me to put it up until after Thanksgiving. Um, But man, I really want to put that Christmas tree up. Thank you so much. Love y'all. Bye. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.